Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar. We're so excited to have you here today. I'm Thea Fastbinder, and this is my husband, Greg Fastbinder, and we are so pumped to be here today. We've been planning this hour for the last couple of weeks to provide you with so much value. So I can still see that some folks are coming in, so wanted to first uh, welcome everyone. And as you get situated, uh, let me give you a rundown of how the next hour is going to go. So we know if you're anything like us, you've got a million things going on. And here's our promise. No fluff and only the actionable stuff that will help you overcome your fear and get you up speaking confidently and powerfully. So maybe you're going to use this webinar to give a sales pitch or a business presentation, or maybe you have your site set on the TED stage. Regardless of your background and your level of experience, this webinar will take you on a journey in your public speaking from where you are currently to where you want to be. And all that in 60 minutes. Does that sound great? It does. Okay, good. So here's what you're going to get in the next hour. We promise the most productive way to think about anxiety while you're presenting. Why you're actually strongest when you present yourself with vulnerability and the secret to breathing that will just completely transform your confidence. We think we actually promise that it will be transformative. And let me just say hi, everyone, again. I'm Greg Fastbinder, president and co-founder of the Moxie Institute, or as I usually introduce myself, I'm Fia's husband. <laughs> anyway, everyone, uh, thanks for uh, continuing to uh, join us. Um, Fia's exactly right. We are really thrilled to have you join us. And we did want to mention a few other things and uh, wanted to express gratitude and our appreciation for you attending today, speaking of perks. So at the end of the session, we're going to be giving everyone a number of different resources we know you're going to value and appreciate. The first is our Speak with Moxie ebook. If you haven't downloaded it, we're going to send it to you, and we highly recommend you take a look at it. It's received some rave reviews since launching just a few months ago. It is packed with insights and tips and tricks even for the most confident speakers out there. It touches on uh, also just what a little bit of what we're going to get to today, but then it adds so much more about how to excite your audience and the specific techniques you can use to develop what we refer to as executive presence. Anyway, we know you're going to love it, and it's complimentary for just attending today. We're also going to include a copy of a little monograph, and it's actually our next ebook, Why Every Business Leader Needs to Give a TED Talk. Why Every Business Leader Needs to Give a TED Talk. We just finished this ebook. It's so fresh. The graphics haven't even been put on it yet, but we'd like to get it in your hands. We'd love for your feedback, and we would love your ideas as we continue to publish new content complimentary to upskill and provide value to our audience. And that's complimentary to everyone. And finally, this webinar is like a mini masterclass. It's drawn from our brand new Moxie masterclass that's starting in just a few weeks. And today you're going to get part, actually a sliver of one of the modules. And this, while it's new, how many, how long has it been in the making? Years. <laughs> it's uh, certainly been over, uh, over a year. And uh we're going to tell you more about the masterclass at the end, but today's uh, webinar will take a deep dive into one of the modules that we'll cover in the 12 module masterclass. And also, if you sign up today for our masterclass, we're going to be giving each of you that signs up today a free half hour speaker coaching session with one of our master speaker coaches. And that is typically valued at $500 per session. And that's free too, so lots of good free stuff if you sign up for the masterclass today. All right, so we're gonna be gathering together all the questions that you drop into the chat box, and that at the end, if we don't get to your questions, we're gonna take as many as possible, bumping up into the hour, so please chime in. You can add as many questions as you want. We want this to be interactive and iterative, so please uh, share with us your questions, and let's get started. Yeah, we love your questions. Feel free to ask as many questions as you have, and we'll try to answer them. Uh, so now that we have the housekeeping out of the way, let's jump in. We are going to start by talking about fear. Why start with fear? I mean, where, could there be any more abstract place to start? 
Well, we're talking about fear because it's really the number one reason we get all of our clients, not all of our clients, I'll say at least half of our clients come through the door to Moxie because of fear. And by fear, I don't mean this kind of pee in your pants fear that um, maybe we experienced as children. I mean, none of us got to this point in our career by going catatonic every time we speak. What I mean by fear is actually seeking anxiety or the uncomfortable sensations that are caused by fight or flight. And we're going to start there because like I said, it's the number one thing we get asked about. And what's more horrific is the advice that people have been given around their fear. Like, um, imagine your audience in their underwear. First of all, when did that ever work? And my, to, my pet peeve is, um, don't be, don't be afraid. Of, don't be fearful. You know, be fearless. You got to just overcome your fear, crush your fear. And that sort of advice we're here to say is just BS because fear is hardwired into our brains. There's, there's no escaping it. Um, and that's just it. That's the goal really. It's not to become fearless because that's impossible. It's a human emotion. The goal is simply to fear less. See what I did there? Fear less. Nice. So at this point, you might be thinking, what do presentations have to do with fear? What do presentations have to do with acting? And I just want to take a second to, to go take a step back in my career. And I started as an actor. And when I was acting and when I was in theater school, I had debilitating fear. I had debilitating stage fright to the point that I would throw up backstage before I had a, a show. I literally, there was a bucket with my name on it. But I loved to perform. It was my heart, it was my soul, it was my passion, it was what I wanted to do with my life. And so I realized that I had to push past that fear, literally push past that fear to get myself out of the weeds and onto the stage. And I developed a set of tools that helped me push past that fear go on stage and do what I love to do, which was perform. And, you know, fast forward a decade later when I was teaching acting and then public speaking at UCSD, I was able to apply these same tools that worked for me to my students at UCSD. And I was able to say, look, I've been in your shoes. I've been exactly where you are. And I figured out some things that have worked for me and I want to introduce them to you. So that's what we're starting for today. Uh, and you're probably saying, still, what does this have to do with acting? But it has everything to do with acting because the best speeches are performances. Uh, and actors devote their lives to figuring out how to master a performance. We learn breathing and moving and speaking so that we can draw an audience in and take them on a journey. And every good presentation does the same thing. Yeah, well said. At Moxie, we like to say that a great presentation, just like great performances, requires being as truthful as possible in an extremely manufactured environment. And that's just true uh, as it is for Broadway premieres, as it is for a boardroom speech or a business presentation. Now, manufactured, what it doesn't really mean um, like fake. What it means is having a purposeful process. So there's no such thing as um, going into um, that process. We could go way more into this process and cover a ton more than just an hour. But why? that's why this masterclass is, is 12 weeks. We're gonna to start to address the, the biggest stumbling block for half of our clients that we find, which is fear. So Fia, before we move on, here's, here's a really good question that, that just came in. And it touches on some of this fear, which is I get up on stage and I've rehearsed, I've prepared, and I go blank. So walk us through what your recommendation is. So we're actually, we'll talk about this later in the webinar, but what's really interesting about going blank is that when our body goes into fight or flight, our brain literally starts to shut down our prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for memory, rational thought, problem solving. And it can actually reduce, it can reduce working memory by up to 75%, 75%. And, and we're going to talk about this later, but so, that deer in headlights or that blinking experience, it's actually real. It's your body's automatic hormonal response to fear. So the best thing you can do, and again, we're gonna get into this technique later, so this is a great question, but the best thing you can do is really breathe and breathe in a way that will oxygenate your brain and bring that blood flow back and bring your prefrontal cortex back to life. That's the first step. 
And then the other hack that I really like is plan for that to happen and actually have a question that you can throw out to the audience that will actually make the audience talk to each other for a while. Mm -hmm. And while they're talking to each other, you can go back to your notes, find your place, and get back on track. Oh, uh, what a great strategy. Yeah. That was almost like a softball for what's to come. Yeah, that's a plan B. All right, so we've got three strategies today to help you push past that anxiety and fear less with every talk. And the first strategy is just to acknowledge that anxiety. Don't worry about it. You often hear that. Don't try to eliminate it. Don't try to imagine that real public speakers don't get stage fright. As we said, it's complete BS. At Moxie, we've worked with some of the most recognizable corporate names in America, companies like Netflix and Google and Coca-Cola. We work with the senior most executives and the CEOs. We promise that the leaders inside of every organization that we've ever worked with, they deal with stage fright. So you might think that uh, a CEO up on stage is as comfortable as she can be. Get that? <laughs> but if it's a high stakes speech, we guarantee that they're nervous. The only thing that sets them apart is that elite speakers have learned how to acknowledge their fear and use it to their advantage. So let's talk about fear. First of all, did you all know that there's a word for it? And the word is glossophobia, which actually derives from Latin, and it means fear or dread of the tongue. And in a recent census, a recent census study in the United States, we discovered that almost 74% of Americans suffer from glossophobia. It's almost seven out of 10 of us. So when I was in theater school, we had this quote, which I love, uh, if you're not nervous, you're dead. Uh, and it really applies here, meaning that most of us that are alive and breathing have some degree of stage fright. Absolutely. And my other favorite quote around this is by Mark Twain, who said, there are two types of speakers, those that are nervous and those that are liars. We also learned in that same census study, statistically, we would prefer death to giving a speech. Jerry Seinfeld has a joke that at a funeral, most people would rather be lying in the casket than delivering the eulogy. And this makes sense if we think about the biology and evolution. Public speaking, get this, this is a kind of a fun fact, has only been around for 60,000 years. But our survival instinct as humans has kept us alive for millions of years. So for most of us mere mortals, every time we get up to speak in public, we have to override that monkey brain and our limbic system that is telling us this is a threatening situation. Yes, um, and speaking of 60,000 years of public speaking, how many of you have gone up to speak in public and gotten dry mouth? I was actually just working with a client on Maybe. this this morning. For sure. Uh, what's so interesting about speech anxiety and what happens to our body, these uncomfortable sensations, is that most of them are caused by our body shutting down anything that is unnecessary to fight or flee. So in the case of dry mouth, that is caused because your body shuts down digestion. It's not necessary in those situations to fight or flee. And what is a byproduct of digestion? Saliva or spit. So uh, that, that's a, a good tip for you to always drink at least a half a bottle of water before you go on stage. You can help stay hydrated and avoid that dry mouth. But as it turns out, spit is the least of our problems because the most of our problems that happen with fight or flight is when it starts to shut down our brain as our um, participant asked in that question. And when it shuts down our working memory up to 75%, this is when we can really get into trouble. 75% wow. redu reduction in working memory in fight or flight. So this is when we can really get ourselves into trouble when we're speaking and we feel this kind of fight or flight with us. Uh, it, it's all of us. And I love this quote by Patricia Ball. Have any of you ever experienced the deer in that headlight moment when you knew your content and then just got up there and you completely blanked, right? Like that question. Yeah, thank you, fight or flight. Now, the last thing we want to do in this webinar is freak anyone out, right? We all get it, but we're here to provide tools in the toolbox. So here's the good news. There are benefits to speech anxiety. That's right, there are benefits to speech anxiety. And if you use it correctly, you can actually make yourself a better speaker. In fact, that fear focuses us and it narrows our attention to ensure that we do a great job. It goes back to that quote, if you're not nervous, you're dead. Meaning those nerves, they give your presentation life, they give it fuel, and we're gonna teach you how. And I would much rather watch a nervous speaker than a boring one, right? 
And in fact, I, I have to say that nervous speakers are much easier to train than lifeless ones. And the most seasoned actors, performers, athlete, and I've trained scores, they all deal with stage fright. It's just our body wanting to do a good job. And the difference between them and most of us is they learn to channel that energy, that nervous energy into usable energy. And another one of my favorite quotes about fear, and I've collected them over the years, is by broadcast journalist Edward R. Murrow, who actually suffered from speech anxiety also. And he said, the best speakers know enough to be scared. The difference between the pros and the novices is that the pros have trained the butterflies to fly in formation. And, and that's really what we're doing here. We're, we're channeling that energy. We're teaching those butterflies to fly in formation. And that first starts by acknowledging your fear. Yes, acknowledging the fear. So listen, fear is completely normal. We're all human after all. And what are we so afraid of anyway? Most of us are afraid of rejection. We fear being laughed at, we fear being criticized and ostracized. And if there's one thing that I've learned is that the killer of any great performance or speech is not gonna be your fear of rejection. It's actually playing it safe out of fear. To be a great performer and a great speaker, we need to be risk takers. You need to be a risk taker. We need to let go of that fear of what people are thinking of us while we're speaking. And once you're able to acknowledge that fear, something magical happens. You're actually able to fear less. So the most ex successful speakers we know and have coached don't succeed because they don't fear, but because they learn to manage those fears, they be, they're able to channel those fears. And this webinar will dig deep to unearth those secrets that world-class speakers use to push past this fear. So if you've been postponing a lifelong dream to step in the center of that red circle, i.e. the TED stage, for instance, out of fear, then we hope this webinar will offer tremendous value. And from what we've observed, most people, to borrow Tim Ferriss's phrase, have an emergency break that can be traced back to this collection of fears that is usually the byproduct of our overactive imaginations or spooky things lurking in the closet. I mean, have you ever looked at somebody that's achieving great things and thought to yourself, what do they have that I don't? So after years of coaching clients and great speakers, we really believe that the critical differentiator between those people that are doing big things and speaking on big stages and those of us that don't, is the ability to really examine, identify, and deconstruct these fears. So some fears are, are real. Like if you're afraid that you have 100 slides and only 30 minutes to present, that's a real fear and you should probably cut back your material. But um, being afraid that in that same speech somebody is going to boo you off the stage, for example, that's a pretty nonsensical, mm -hmm. unfounded fear. So a lot of this is about identifying real fears versus imagined fears. I think Tim Ferriss puts it really well when he says, there are many potential closet Elon Musks in the world who have tremendous capacity, but haven't exercised it because of fear. Don't let this be you. So when it comes to approaching your fears to achieve success at the highest level, especially in speaking, most advice out there tells you to be fearless in the sense of having no fear at all. Well, we believe that nobody is ever fearless. It's about defining your fears to fear less. Look, Another fun fact, Warren Buffett was absolutely terrified of public speaking, but he knew that if he could speak in public, he would end, it would end his career. In fact, the only certificate on Buffett's office wall is his Dale Carnegie public speaking certificate from 1952. People are often surprised when we start going through our list of leaders who suffer from stage fright and have pushed past these fears to be uber successful. Believe me, for everyone who has expressed it publicly, there are so many billionaires and CEOs and entrepreneurs who express it privately. In fact, we've worked with several of them. And when I think about fear, I always think of a client that we'll call Gerald for this webinar. And Gerald had actually never spoken in public. And when he and his wife came to see us, Jerry wanted some help preparing for an upcoming fundraiser. And I'll never forget their story. It sticks with me because 13 years before this, their son had died of cancer. And while their son was in the hospital, they found out that thousands of kids die annually 
simply because they can't afford to make it to their treatment. And the burden to those families who can't afford the car to get there and are taking public transportation to the hospital is immense. And so after their son passed away, Jerry and his wife set up a nonprofit to help kids get the care they needed, specifically transportation, to and from the appointments. And they built this nonprofit that for 17 years, Jerry had never been the mouthpiece for. And so he barely spoke a word on behalf of this organization. I don't know how he did it. I have a feeling that his wife did all the talking. Don't say a word. <laughs> so Jerry was afraid to speak to a group, let alone at an important fundraiser. So the first part we started, the first place we started was just by acknowledging that he was afraid. Uh, and also these layers of uncomfortability around this horrible event in their life of their son dying. And in order to acknowledge that fear, we started working on breath, which again, we'll get to later in this webinar, but breath is so important when we are pushing towards fear. And what I uncovered during the training is that in the hospital, Jerry would read Dr. Seuss's, Oh, the Places You'll Go to his son. Some of you might know that book. And so we began our breath work there. And with tears tripping down his face, Jerry would read, pause, breathe, read, breathe, read, cry, breathe. And eventually, after weeks and sessions of doing this, something unlocked in Jerry. And his performance was calm. It was confident. It was peaceful. He found literally this voice inside of him that he had never been able to express. And now he speaks all over the country on behalf of this organization. I just saw them on a news interview in New York. And the, he tells his story. He tells the story of his son and he tells the story of these kids in this incredible way. And it all began by just acknowledging. I, I remember when we first met Jerry and his wife, they were really ready to walk towards the sphere and transform into confident and passionate messengers for their organization. Really incredible and inspiring. And it was just, it was incredible to see their, the change in them. And I'm glad you bring up Jerry uh, for a number of reasons, but he is such an amazing example of what I'd like to share a little bit about, which is vulnerability. And one of the things that stands out to me is how you specifically helped Jerry embrace the fear without, without putting up walls. And to me, that's all part of what I and others have come to call leading from the stage. And if that sounds appealing, if you'd like to lead from the stage, if you have to be a strong speaker and to get strong, you have to be vulnerable. And I know how that sounds because we typically think of vulnerability as a sign of weakness, but it's not, at least not in the way that folks usually think. But I've never, ever seen a speaker who got hurt from something they opened up about on stage. That's just not the type, kind of dynamic that gets established between the speaker and the audience. So it doesn't bring on weakness. It actually strengthens that emotional bond between the stage and the seats. And if that sounds appealing to you, here are some specific action items that we found that work exceptionally well. First, you've got to mentally reframe your experience. You're not there to put up barriers. You're there to build bridges. Did you just come up with that? No, oh, but that's pretty good. That's a tweetable. <laughs> So what are you always saying about the importance of practice? That it's important. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So anyway, as I was saying, too many speakers go into their event by shutting themselves off emotionally. And we found that there's a simple way to train ourselves out of this habit and to get ourselves into that mindset of vulnerability. It's a trip that helped me be realistic about my own fears and that I learned from Tim Ferriss' TED Talk on fear setting. So we've prepared many of you in advance of this webinar, and we've sent to you the workbook. So now's a, a great time to uh, take a look at that workbook, get it out, and if not, you can certainly refer to it uh, later. And uh, when, when I can't sleep at night before a big presentation, and that yes, that happens to, to all of us, we prepare by drawing this simple exercise on a piece of paper. We guide our clients through this. The first column has my fear on it. The second column has the worst thing that could ever happen if that fear came true. 
And the third column has the best thing that ever could happen if it did come true. So let's take a few minutes and practice this now so you'll have the, the hang of it when that big moment comes. Our goal here is to examine and deconstruct your fears, making it much easier to separate your well-founded fears from the unfounded fears so that you can take extremely calculated risks. And what makes this exercise so valuable is that it works for any setting, anywhere that you're facing some risks. Maybe that's quitting your job or speaking at an important conference or becoming the next Elon Musk. This exercise is designed to show you how fearing less will make the tough decisions you need to succeed on your own terms. So here goes. Step number one, define the risk. All right, so go ahead, get out your pen and paper, turn that paper horizontally or on the back of the workbook so it's the longest left to right, and make your three columns. In the heading, we want you to write down whatever risk you're considering. For example, I'll use the one that, that I just did. Let's say you're afraid of quitting your job to start your own business. You'd write, quitting my own job to start my own business as the page header. Then divide that page into those three columns by drawing the two lines down the center. And you can refer to the worksheet again in your workbook if that's easier for you. Step number two, define those worst case scenarios. In that first column, write down in bullet points all of the worst case scenarios that you could possibly happen if you acted on what you're considering. For example, I won't be able to pay my rent. I'm going to have to move in with my parents. Be sure to be specific. Write down as many negative outcomes imaginable. You want to aim for volume here. Third step is to minimize that risk. So in the second column, you're going to write down respectively what you could do to minimize the possibility of each negative outcome written in the first column. For example, I'm going to wait to quit my job until my business can sufficiently cover all of my basic expenses, right? Step number four you plan for the worst case scenario. In the third column, you wanna write down all the things that you could do to get back on track if each negative outcome happened. For example, I could do entry level work within my current profession until I find a job doing what I do now. Step number five, fear rehearsal. And this is really the extra credit. And if you really wanna stimulate your worst fears as a way to inoculate you from your fears, for example, Try spending a week in your parents' basement to experience that fear firsthand. More than likely, you're going to come to realize that your worst case scenarios are not really as nearly as bad as you thought they were. Tim Ferriss apparently does some form of fear setting or fear rehearsal every quarter, and he attributes it all to his biggest successes and his biggest disasters. And that's it. It's very simple steps, but I guarantee that if you make them a practice before each presentation, you're gonna find that its effectiveness uh, will bring you to an entirely new place. And it's a really dramatic difference. I, I'll never forget when we did this with one of our Netflix executives who had a presentation and she couldn't sleep for nights before and actually used to send her into a panic even the thought of not being able to sleep for nights before. And she was in this kind of semi-panic state when she came to us. And Doing this simple fear setting exercise, well, maybe not simple, but doing this fear setting exercise with her really freed her. And it was the first step for her to not only define her fears, but understand them and most importantly, push towards them so that she could give a confident presentation. Okay, we're going on to our next strategy and we're going to talk about breathing. So I know you're thinking, I, I, obviously, I know how to breathe. I've been doing it my whole life. People always say, why are we talking about breathing? I, I, I know this is not something I need training in, but the question really is, do you breathe well? And here's the pop quiz. During this webinar, have you been taking chest breaths or diaphragmatic breaths? And the key, here's the spoiler alert, we want you taking diaphragmatic breaths. So the first two points we've covered today, acknowledging anxiety and being vulnerable, are all in the brain, and they require us to change our mindset. But breath work is where mental meets physical, and this is what's so cool about it. You, you can't control your heart, you can't control your spleen, you can't control your digestion, but you can control your breath. And that's why it's really the key to confident public speaking. So let's talk about our diaphragms a little. 
Um, no, not those diaphragms. I'm talking about the thoracic diaphragm, which is this big muscle that sits between your gut and your lungs. And I love the diaphragm. It's like the unsung hero of communication because it's just sitting there day in and day out in its little cape waiting to, to help you drive your presentation and give it confidence. And so the problem really is that uh, it, it's on autopilot until we get up to speed. That's when it does the exact opposite of what it should. When you're anxious, and remember, look, we're all anxious before some speeches, your body knows it needs more oxygen. But unless you consciously decide to take control of that breathing, your respiration shifts toward faster and shallower breaths, which makes you even more anxious, which means even faster breaths, and on and on and on. And then you wake up on the floor. If you've experienced this before, you know that stage fright or speech anxiety is a vicious cycle. First, your body is taken over by those uncomfortable feelings, so you escape to your head. Your mind races. You take faster and faster, and you make less sense. You notice you make no sense, so you speed up again, and you forget to breathe. Then less oxygen goes to your brain, and adrenaline is zooming through your system. You make even less sense, and so that downward spiral continues. And most of us as human beings, we hold our breath when we're experiencing stress. It's our body's reaction to the stress. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But the key to keeping that fear cycle from completely taking over your presentation is breath. How do we do that? Well, we're going to go over the specific techniques, I promise you. But it's what's important in general is deliberately slowing down the speed and the intensity of your breathing. And this is crucial to reducing fight or flight. And I actually call this slowing down your body time. And the amazing thing that happens when you do this is that it not only calms you, your audience will mirror that calm. So how does it work? Let's get into the nitty gritty of the breath work. The diaphragm, like I said, it's a sheath of muscle that sits right here between your abdomen and your lungs. And it's curved like a dome. And it goes like this, and it actually pushes oxygen in and out your lungs. And when we use it correctly, it gives us a full reservoir of air to give our, vo our voices more power and volume, which we're gonna talk about in another module of this masterclass. We'll talk about voice work, I promise, and how to have powerful voices, which is definitely key to our diaphragmatic breathing. But what's important for this webinar and to understand with calming or centering you is that the reason we train our diaphragms to work for us and to push more oxygen into our body is because when we flood our bodies and brains with more oxygen, our heart rate's lower, and this calms and centers us. So I call your diaphragm your power tool for public speaking. So let's talk about what happens when people always say to you, like, take a deep breath, right? Um, how do you really do that? Well, here's the deal. When you are nervous in a presentation, you start to take shallow chest breaths. But if you can take big diaphragmatic breaths when you're feeling nervous, you, you're going to fight that survival instinct and you're going to take your body out of fight or flight and into de rest and digest. So our real job as speakers, and this is difficult but doable, is to breathe through that discomfort, breathe through that threat reaction to tell our body that it's in our brain, that it's cool, it's safe, and it's not under attack. Interestingly enough, in a recent study on performance anxiety, Australian researchers found that musicians who practice deep breathing before performances were able to lower their blood pressure and increase blood oxygen concentration. They recommend, before reaching for the beta blockers, anyone facing an anxiety-provoking situation might want to try an extremely low-cost alternative, guaranteed to not produce any negative side effects, and perhaps it's the simplest way to let go of fear, which is slowly mindfully exhaling. Mm -hmm. So here's a visualization that might help you. Imagine a willow tree in the middle of a storm. It's the high winds are thrashing the branches around, right? And that's what it sometimes feels like when you lose control during a presentation. But now imagine the same willow tree and imagine the trunk of that willow tree. And the trunk is steadfast, it's grounded, it's not moving during that same storm. So this is the first step to understanding breathing is using this visualization. And always when you're feeling like you're in a storm in a presentation, to come back to your breath. And your breath 
will ground you. It will keep you steady and, and, and uh, unwavering in those moments. The other thing to really keep in mind is that all of us, before we present, get this moment where these naysaying voices get really loud in our heads. And breathing, and breathing louder and stronger than those naysaying moments will really help us tune into what makes us special, what makes us unique, what makes us different and qualified to give that presentation. So uh, let's go granular on our breathing. I bet at least 50% of our uh, watchers today have never even thought about their diaphragm and don't know how to locate their diaphragm, have them put their hands on their diaphragm. So that's what we're gonna do today so that you have this breathing technique to help you. And it starts first with the right posture. So I'm going to stand, we'll let Greg stay seated. Uh, you'll notice that we're probably still about the same height. And in order to find your diaphragm, we're gonna practice some body awareness here. And I'm gonna ask each of you to raise your arms over your head and then take a deep breath in. And then as you exhale, slowly lower your arms to your side, but keep your rib cage where it is. You'll notice that your rib cage is a bit puffed out. And make sure that your shoulders are back and they're not hunched over. So this is really the posture that's best for confident public speaking and also to locate our diaphragm and keep it expanded. So now with your hands down at your side, take another deep breath. And actually, while you're doing this, and I'm hoping you're doing this at your computers, put one hand on your belly and one hand on your chest. And take a deep breath again, and I want you to notice what happens to your hands. Which hand is raising uh, up? And here's another square alert. We want it to be the hand on your belly, not the hand on your chest. So breathe in, and then breathe out. And you'll notice if you're using your diaphragm, your belly is going to pop out and push out your hand and not your chest. Now we have lungs, so our chest will expand a little bit, but we really want it coming from here. And sometimes it helps to imagine that there's a giant balloon in your belly. And every time you breathe in, you fill that balloon up with air. And when you exhale, all that air comes out. So we're going to try that one more time, filling up our balloon. And here's the disclaimer. This shouldn't hurt. This should just feel different. Breathe in and then breathe out. So welcome to your diaphragm, folks. <laughs> Good. So I like to use in this in this situation, I like to use an analogy of sushi uh, because most of us have had sushi or sashimi, and we all know My taste buds just uh, expired. we all know that sushi is fish on rice, right? And um, the fish is supported by the rice. So if you think about the fish, is your voice, and the rice is your diaphragm or your breath, and we all need this constant reservoir of air to support our voice, just like we need that rice to support the fish. And when the rice isn't supporting the fish, the fish flops over, right? Well, when our breath is not supporting our voice, it flops over. So it can sound something like this, like we're running out of breath and we're breathy. So that's what happens when we don't incorporate diaphragmatic breathing. And we will have another module in the master class again that has to do with breath support for powerful voices. So if you're one of those people that feels like your voice is too soft or too breathy or you run out of breath when you get nervous, we'll talk about that. But today we want to talk about diaphragmatic breathing, not for our voices, but for fear reduction. So here's the exercise that you need to do next time you're nervous. Your number one priority uh, with breathing is really to bring back your frontal lobe so you don't forget. You bring back your working memory and also to take your body out of fight or flight and into rest and digest. And the best way to do that is to take rhythmic breaths. It's actually, it's not about deep breaths and it's not about big breaths, it's about rhythmic breaths. And when I say rhythmic, I want you to imagine like a crew team rowing a boat. So the, the paddles go in, out, in, out, in, out, right? So we need to create that kind of steady rhythm with our breathing in order to bring our body out of fight or flight. And actually, scientifically, what has been proven to work is that the rhythms must be in a four, four, four fixed ratio. So that means four second inhale, four second hold, four second exhale. And we have to do that at least three times through. So I'm gonna do that with you now. And this is, this is the technique, guys. This is the power tool for confidence. And you can do this before your presentation and it will really help. So I'm gonna count while you breathe. And remember, put your hand on your belly now for some body awareness. Make sure you're breathing from your diaphragm and you're not heaving up your chest. And we're gonna inhale four, hold four, exhale four. Here we go. Breathe, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, four, 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 hold, two, three, four. Exhale, four
exhale, two, three, four. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. One last time. Inhale, two, three, four. Hold, two, three, four. Exhale, two, three, four. And you could probably see in here, Greg, doing this, but what I didn't say to you because I was too busy speaking is that the inhales are best done through your nostrils like this. And the exhales are best done through pursed lips like this. So you can audibly hear your breathing. And that's it. That's great. This is a key to confidence and bringing your body out of fight or flight and back to rest and digest. Or more importantly, back to planet Earth. Can't you feel the difference in the last few minutes? Now imagine how much stronger your voice and your body would be on stage if you could just train yourself to breathe from that gut. It's really the simplest and most powerful physical and mental transformation I know that can really make a difference. Uh, in, in a confident presentation. Without a doubt. So just to recap, we've covered fear setting and breath work, and we've covered several techniques you can use anytime during preparation. Now we wanna talk about how to prep just before the event. By now, I think it's become obvious that your body can change your thoughts and feelings. Your body can change your thoughts and feelings. So why don't you lead them through a pre-presentation warm-up? Yeah, a warm-up is absolutely key to do before a presentation. And uh, I've spent years trying to perfect the perfect warm-up for my coaching clients. And what I found to be the sweet spot is a warm-up that includes the following components. Physical, mindset, vocal, and breath work. And we're going to lead you through a mini warm-up that you can use in the wings before your presentation in a bathroom stall in your office that will get you ready to give a confident presentation and help you start to, uh, we're not going to say conquer that fear, but push past that fear. And the first step really is mindset. So we want to psych ourselves up, not out, right? We want those negative self-talk to become self-fulfilling. We don't want that negative self-talk to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So don't stand backstage thinking, what if I mess up? Think more like an athlete before a big game. You want to psych yourself up when, with phrases like, I'm so excited. This is going to be great. I can't wait to share this idea. Basically, whatever key phrase makes you feel happy, makes you feel good, energizes you, even just the word thinking uh, and saying yes over and over. Feel how that thought enters your body and it boosts your confidence. Yeah, and that's all great for mindset. And then we want to come to the present moment. And the best way to come to the present moment is really to return to your body. So when our nerves start to get the best of us, most of us go inward and we start to have all these worrisome thoughts, like hamster and wheel thoughts. What if I fail? What if they don't like me? What if I'm not the right person to do this? What if it doesn't go well? And we think about all these problems and we're not present at all. So bringing awareness to the physical can really help. And the best, most simplest way to do that is to start to pay attention to your body's own physical cues your breath, your heart rate, um, your, if you're shaking, the way your shoes feel on, on the ground, the way your feet feel in your shoes, and then come back to the physical by shifting your gravity, shifting your center of gravity, really feel, starting to feel physical sensations will quickly snap you back to the present moment and take you out of that inner downward spiral that happened. So now shift your center of gravity, and I want everyone to take another deep breath. And imagine a heavy lead ball right in that stomach. Feel the weight of it, feel the solidity of it, and bring your focus here instead of your, of your head or your chest, which happens so frequently. We want you to ground yourself in something physical by anchoring or touching something around you, like your life, a table, a wall, anything physical to the touch. Right, so, so mindset uh, and coming back to the present moment through any kind of physical sensations. And then obviously breath work. Breath work is so crucial to any good warm up. So when you start to feel those nervous sensations, that adrenaline sitting in your body, breathe. And you can use my mantra, you can hear my mantra playing through your head and that mantra is breathe low and slow, right? Take those four conscious inhale, hold, exhales that we talked about earlier and do this low and slow. Feel it dropping. 
your energy and shifting your focus to a more grounded, sustained energy like that willow tree trunk. Lastly, let's get physical. We're going to start by shaking out every limb of our body. We're going to wiggle. We're going to dance. We're going to get that blood flowing, and we're going to make it tingle. Whatever works for you. The point here is that we're going to use our body's nervous energy for good. It's a force of good. We don't want you to try to contain all that nervous energy and hold it in. That never works. Let it move through you. Let it energize you for your talk. So here's why it never works. When fight or flight hits us and that adrenaline hits our bloodstream and our muscles, more importantly, what we're really supposed to do is what? Fight or flee. Unfortunately, when we're giving a speech, most of us are just stuck there, frozen. So if we don't get that extra adrenaline out of our body, it can really cramp up our presentation and stiffen us up. So we're going to do a quick shakedown. And like Greg said, you don't have to do this one. If you want to do isometrics, jumping jacks, dance, listen to hip hop, whatever it is that works for you. But here's a little quick uh, energizer that we use and we call it the shakedown. So um, I'm going to ask this. Greg to do it with me. I want everybody to imagine that um, there is a, a disgusting, something disgusting in Billy and it's stuck to your right hand and your arm and it's, and it's stuck and you're shaking it off. Shake so hard. Not just your arm. Shake, 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 shake. And when you drop your arm, you should feel it all tingling. I like to call this getting your chi flowing. And then shake your other hand and arm the same way. Shake, 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 shake. So the whole thing vibrates. Shake all that nervous energy out. All that stagnant negative energy. Shake it out. Good. Now I want you to imagine we're going to do the same thing for our lower body. Imagine that you have a little rabid dog and it's stuck to your foot and it's it's biting your shoe. Shake it off, shake it off, shake it off, shake, 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 shake. Go get it off. Then your other foot, now you've stepped in, it's dog poop. Shake it off, shake it, shake it, get it off your foot, get it off your foot. Now I want you to imagine that you have fire ants stuck all over your body and you shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, shake them out, good. And as ridiculous as this seems, I guarantee you work, it works. And if you went backstage at any TEDx event or any theater in the world, you would see actors and speakers doing all sorts of crazy things to get that negative energy and that extra adrenaline out of their body. So, so that's great. And then the last step, the cherry on top of this warm-up, is a power pose. Because studies have shown that power poses or any confident pose that maximizes the space our body takes up in a room can really lead to powerful presentations. And one of the things we like to do with this power pose, just to um, throw a little jet fuel on it, is not just to do the power pose, but to say a sentence by Cyrano de Bergerac uh, that I'm going to put up on your screen right here so that you can see it and you can say it with us. So we are going to throw our arms in the air in a power pose, and we're going to say, I feel, I feel too, too strong, strong to war with, with mortals. mortals. Bring, Bring me giants. And, you know, I have whole departments at T-Mobile, um, engineers <laughs> in the parking lot, walking around like this before they have to present to the FSA. I feel too strong to war with mortals. Bring me giants. So, obviously, that's a great way to end your warm-up. And doing these components, the mindset, the breath work, the physical, and the vocal are a great way to get you in the right headspace and the right physical space for your presentation. So there you go. If you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes at a TEDx talk or a TED stage, uh, this is it. That's your foolproof pre presentation warm up, and we guarantee it'll throw jet fuel on your presentation. And I know that we've covered a lot of content here, and I haven't even begun to cover. Uh, what I think is the real true antidote for fear of uh, speech anxiety, which is really rehearsal. And yes, there will be a whole module about rehearsal in the masterclass and how to do rehearsal effectively. I'll end with this. Fear stops people. It has certainly stopped me and Fee in the past from taking risks and trying a lot of things that we might otherwise try. This fear of failing or not achieving perfection, but perfection is a serial killer. And the more I work in this business, the more I live by this quote that you can see on your screen, which is, follow your fear. It's a GPS for where your soul wants to go. Because it's really, it's not about being fearless. It's not even about being perfect. It's about showing up. And that's why Moxie exists, to help you show up and walk towards that fear. Great. So now we've had the chance to cover the absolute basics in the hour we've got here. So I know you've got tons of questions. Please uh, continue to ask, and we're going to get to a few of them, and drop them in the chat box. But first, I wanted to say a little bit more about where these strategies come from. 
because maybe you're sitting there thinking, there's a lot of great information, but it's going to take me a while to process it, to apply it, to execute it, and I might need some help along the way. And that's a very common reaction to hearing this material, right? And that's why we're launching this Moxie Masterclass that's designed to drill down into every topic you need for masterful public speaking. And it'll be done in a format, it's fun, it's collaborative, it's intense, and you'll be a part of community of learners with the same goal. We know that this is of interest. We already have a ton of people who have already uh, registered, but we wanted to share a couple of the details with you, and then we'll get back to some of the Q&A and what we plan on sharing with the audience. So whether you're a veteran TEDxer or you're totally new to public speaking, this in-depth masterclass will prove the power and persuasiveness of your communication and presentations. It's for professionals at all levels looking to sharpen their edge, and it's the most insightful speech training you can get without leaving your home or office. Trust us, this is over a year in the making. We've surveyed and researched and done SWOT analysis on every single online and in-person course out there. This course is absolutely overflowing with actionable takeaways, and here's just a sneak peek at what you need to know and what you want to know with some of the perks. All right, so here goes. It's a 12-week course. Each week is dedicated to a single essential topic that you can see here on the screen, and there's one week that's entirely on how to breathe, for example, because it's so important. Yeah, and we're gonna cover every, everything. In fact, I'm gonna cover everything because I'm leading this masterclass from the beginning of how to figure out what you should be talking about, what you want to talk about, through how you move your mouth, to when you're speaking, to how do you create a PowerPoint that doesn't suck. We've even got a module that's designed at the end to help people that might want to be on the TED stage or want just to take up speaking as a side hustle. So it's soup to nuts from beginning to end, a comprehensive speaker training program. It's also one of the most value-packed master classes that we found. Uh, if you were to just package up our one-on-one our -on -one speaker coaching, you're talking about thousands of dollars. If you're talking about some of the real intensive courses, you're talking about a couple thousand dollars. We wanted to strategically price this at under a thousand dollars. And we're going to make it even better value for everyone who's attending and watching uh, or listening in. If you sign up in the next 48 hours, we're going to give you, like we shared at the beginning, a half hour session with the Moxie Master Trainer of your choice. That's right, you can speak with one of our uh, master speech writing uh, individuals, trainers, master coaches. You can speak with one of our Emmy Award winning media specialists. And yeah, you can, and we also have speaker coaches that can help you with live presentations or 10 worthy presentations. And like we said, our training packages and our sessions usually start at $500 per session but we want to put our money where our mouth is. We want to build a relationship with you. And so we're giving away this session completely free for those of you that sign up today. And another advantage is you get every single recording. If you happen to miss a live class or you want to refer to the material over and over again prior to that big event. So we'd absolutely love for you to join us in this masterclass. It's like this webinar on steroids over three months. And we can't wait to see how useful you find it. And if you don't, we're gonna give you your money back. Absolutely 100% satisfaction, guaranteed. That's how much we believe in it and we know how effective it is. And I'm supposed to tell a, a really bad joke that Greg wanted to say <laughs> that at our wedding, but I think it's a really bad joke, so I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now the moment that everyone has been waiting for, roll the Q&A. And if uh, you still have questions, please uh, chime in and why don't we get to uh, the, the first question here? Um, if you see me on my phone, it's only because I am uh, looking at uh, a number of the questions. So the first one that came in, and this is a really good one, um, an experienced speaker who has given presentations before, but isn't familiar with um, what it means to be a paid speaker, and they fell in love with it. And now they want to replicate this. They want to kind of showcase who they are and what they do. What guidance would you give them? Do they fall in love with being a paid speaker or being a speaker? Because I think every speaker should start with wanting to share an idea. And it should really start there. It's not. Well, well, uh, say more, because that's really powerful. We didn't even touch on that. Yeah, yet. for most speakers, it doesn't start with paid speaking gigs. It starts with a lot of free speaking gigs. And starting with 
what it is that you have to share with the world. How are you going to transform people? What is this message that keeps you up at night that you are just can't can't sleep thinking about how you're going to share this message with the world? And that's really my litmus test for speakers. You know, what is it that keeps you up at night? Whether it's out of anger, uh, something that just does not sit well with you that you want to change in the world, or some kind of transformation that you can provide or solution. So that's really where it starts for me. It's, it's about the message, um, not, the, not the fees, not the fees associated with keynoting. Yeah, yeah, well said. And you know, what comes to mind as well is, you know, you know, take a look at some of the other speakers out there. Notice that they've got a one sheet and a speaker reel and they, they kind of package up their own personal brand and their own story, but you're exactly right. It starts with that distilled message you know, how do you want to be known in this world? And what's the legacy that you want to leave? So another another question that frequently comes up because there's so much misinformation out there is what do I do with my hands? <laughs> and I have to say, um, aside from what do I do with my nerves, what do I do with my hands is the second most asked question I get. And I always say to people, do you have any idea what your hands are doing when you're just talking? Everyday life. Do you have any idea what they're doing when you talk to your spouse or your kids Very or your good. colleague? Nobody does because our hands are just an extension of us communicating, right? So why are we so worried about them when we're presenting? That to me, that's a clue that you've gone inward and your energy is going the wrong way because your energy should really be going out to communicating with your audience, giving that message. And when you're doing that, then you're not even thinking about what your hands do. So I do have a hack that if you're so nervous at the beginning of your presentation that you're going to start doing all sorts of fidgety things with your hands, it's okay to hold a water bottle or a clicker just for a while as you're will be until you relax into your presentation. And then I guarantee you your hands will just start to do what they naturally do. Excellent. So we've got another question. Obviously, there's a lot of um, aspiring TED TEDxers, and um, someone is asking, um, what's the what's the process of even you know getting on that TED stage? You know, it's so funny. Everybody makes it into this huge like it's this secret. But honestly, everybody, I, this is the big secret. It's all online. It's all that online. It's all online. You can apply to any TEDx events. That, that, you know, if you want to apply to one that's in your backyard, go onto their website, and they, I guarantee you, they will have their application process online. It is not a big secret. And for most of us, TEDx comes before TED, uh, for most of us. And so I would encourage you to go to a TEDx event and then go to their website and look at the what are the application requirements. Most likely it's going to be looking at you as a thought leader. They might want to see some examples of you speaking and some examples of what you're most likely to talk about. Good. Um, an another question, um, we didn't make this up, uh, is, so talk to me about the coaching process. If someone is interested in coaching, um, you know, what, what's a unique differentiator? Why and what does that process look like? So the, the first unique differentiator is that there is, every coaching engagement is unique. We have master coaches that are all subject matter experts in their field, whether we align you with a PhD who in behavior psychology, who's a master in fear, or somebody that is um, a master in the executive corporate space, or somebody that has more improv experience and can help you add in funny stories to your presentation, or somebody that has more work around content creation and can help you create the speech. So um, it first begins with aligning, aligning your goals, what you want out of the coaching with the right coach, and then creating a customized packet to make sure that you get there. And that includes the right amount of sessions, in-person versus virtual, um, key takeaways, learning reinforcements, and all of this is our way of ensuring that when the coaching engagement is over, that you feel confident with the results that you got. Uh, and so all of our all of our coaches have this amazing uh, trifecta of acting experience or theatrical experience, which is the bedrock of our organization, training experience, and corporate experience. So you're sure to get lined up with a coach that's going to be able to help you accomplish those goals. Great. Excellent. Well, I think that's bumped up against the hour, and we love to start on time. We like to end on time. And I want to just take an opportunity, thank all of you. We know what it's like to, uh, you know, kind of put pause on and focus on something entirely different. And so we're grateful to have had an opportunity to, uh, to teach and to spend this hour with you. 
And we did get to a couple questions, but rest assured, we will respond back to everyone individually. You're also gonna receive a uh, follow-up uh, email with some additional uh, information and some of those uh, freebies that we, that we uh, introduced at the very beginning. And uh, with that, you can reach us, please, anytime, moxieinstitute.com. We're here, we're available for any questions, and we love to guide speakers and unleash inner speaker superheroes. So with that, thank you everyone, and have a great rest of your day.